hope that put a little pep in your step this morning. You know, I um, gave Jonathan the, t- the kind of like direction that I was going to speak this week, but I didn't give him a whole lot to go on. And um, I'm looking at like my main points and I'm like, dude, we already got, we already did talk about what I'm going to talk about already. Amazing when that, when God does that. All right. I don't really need this. Y'all having a good week? It was a little warmer, wasn't it? You can give me, you can bring me down just a little bit. It's a little loud, isn't it? It was a little warmer this week, wasn't it? It was nice. Except it's cold again. It went like 60 degrees. What is this? Is this the way it is here? Like, we get 60 degrees, and then all of a sudden, what is it today? Like 19 again? 16? <laughs> Even better. Even better. All right. Where am I going this morning? This morning, um, we're going to look at Philippians. If you've never read the book of Philippians, and you want to be encouraged, and you want to be filled with joy, this is a perfect book for you. Philippians is full of joy. And so we're going to read from Philippians this morning, chapter 4, verse 10 through 13. And... Um, Before I get to that, I want to talk about joy for life. You know, we talk about something for life. You guys have probably, you know, publishers, clearing house, you win the million dollars and you can choose to get like $5,000 a month for life, right? You 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 could get something for life. It's like continuing. It continues on. You get Chick fil A for life. How many of you would love that? Chick fil A, anybody out there? Oh my goodness, a Chick fil A sandwich. There's something about that. Except for those of you that are allergic to peanuts. It's fried in peanut oil. I have a nephew that's allergic to peanuts and like can't even step foot in a Chick-fil-A. How about uh, being married for life? Now that's, that's a good thing. That's a good thing. Married for life, right? Or maybe uh, you're set for life. You're searching for life. It could be on the other end where we don't want to go to prison for life. No, we don't. We don't want to be crippled for life. We don't want cancer for life, right? There's things, when we say something's for life, there's this kind of uh, eternal thing to it that it gets into our minds. So how do we get joy for life? Because that's, joy is incredible, right? When we experience joy and we, and we know that reality is the way we've always imagined it and it comes true and, and there's something beautiful about that, what is joy? And how, how, how do we understand what joy is? Well, I, want, I, I was in my searching for all this stuff. I, I found this video online. It was a bunch of scholars from different colleges, a couple from Yale, Princeton Theological Seminary. You know, some of the big people in the world that are thinking about what joy is. And I want you to watch this and pay close attention and see what they have to say about joy. Yeah, the simple answer is uh, joy is a kind of emotion um, that responds to, to things. I think we all have a kind of intuitive sense of what joy is. It's what we feel when we see, um, you know, little children playing happily or when we see a beautiful sunset or a great work of art. We, we feel very positive. And, um, so it's a, a feeling, an emotion in response to, to something else. Joy, I take, to be that emotion which happens when I care about reality. Being, being a certain way, and I judge that it is that way. That's, that's when joy ensues. Well, you know, we economists work with the term utility, mm-hmm. which is very close to sort of, you know, happiness or joy, and that's what we are teaching our students. Uh-huh. I think, of, it, I think of, of joy as involving, really, I think the combination, to make it very succinct, of happiness plus gratitude. It is this sense of contentment with the choices that one makes and the paths that one pursues and declines to pursue. I look at joy as an act of resistance against despair and its forces, all the forces of despair. Joy seems to me, um, of course, it depends how one defines the word, but it seems to be a temporary Uh, experience it's not a state so I want to say there's the joy of the moment Mm -hmm. you know she comes around the corner I see her face and I just feel this spontaneous arousal of joy I want to say that's joy right there's the person who has the attitude you know it's a guy you know at work and when things are going bad 
he has a smile and he says, hey, we're going to pull through. This is a guy who sort of practiced joy, without, but he doesn't believe in God. It has nothing to do with that. I want to call that joy. And then there's, there are various levels of joy in that part of our life that is linked to God. So I think the key essence behind joy is that it's about connection. It's about connection with something that is beyond ourselves, whether it's a relationship with another person, a relationship with a supernatural being. There's some connection to something which is beyond ourselves. So it has to have that element of transcendence to it. I think that's probably the critical component to what understanding what joy is. From my point of view, I mean, if we're talking about Christian joy, mm. which is, I think, quite different from other forms of joy, I think joy is fundamentally about a relationship uh, with God. It has to be rooted in that relationship. I tend to think of a joy and happiness to the extent that they are, I think they are related, uh, really are um, inner strengths that enable a life to, to go well. But it's also something like a virtue, uh, something that we're called upon to uh, practice in the light of uh, the relationships that we have with God and with one another. You know, joy for theologians is called a fruit of the Spirit. It's number two in the list after love. That's a hugely important thing. So there's this whole realm of joy, this complexity of, shall we say, theological joy, which then let's not dichotomize that at all from these various kinds of joy mm. of our body, our relationships, our society, mm. our habits, our character. And on the other hand, it's also a very strong, spontaneous emotion, like music, and you know, it has to have that effect. Otherwise, it's not a real sense of joy. So I also think that joy is something that is an immediate uh, expression. And I like to see it as an expression that responds to times when we see something in creation or in redemption or in salvation that suddenly makes sense to us and we sort of, you know, excited about it and then we sort of go, wow, that's really cool. So that, that's my sense of joy, both a steady state and also a spontaneous reaction. I find joy to be a deep-seated sense of well-being with oneself and one's life and the way one is living in the world. That, that comes from a wisely lived life. I mean, I feel that people tend to isolate joy, uh, particularly in sort of uh, modern enlightened concepts, as a goal uh, in itself. Whereas for me, joy is something that has to be rooted in love, in faith, in hope. It's a, a kind of product of that. It's not itself a primary principle. Uh, because if you make it into a primary principle, I think it will have a very deracinated and desiccated feel to it because basically it loses its uh, moral bearings. And joy in that regard is a work that can become a state that can become a way of life. Okay. So here's a bunch of scholars that come onto the scene, and they, they're kind of defining joy for us and what joy is. And joy, you know, as I'm listening to all this, it seems to kind of have a, um, almost an ethereal, out of my uh, understanding kind of a concept to it that I can't really latch onto. But then I start thinking again, and I'm like, well, wait, no, joy really is something that's inside, something that I experience. So, so the, what these guys were saying, I just want to sum it up. Some of them had said joy is an emotion, <clears throat> a positive feeling, Right? Lining up with an ideal. One guy said that it's utility and similar to um, something being useful. A combination of happiness and gratitude. Resistance against despair. I love that one. That was kind of cool, right? Like joy is just like I'm setting up a resistance against despair. Temporary experience and not a permanent state. Which that's just, that's just sad. Connection with something beyond ourselves. Transcendence. A relationship with God. I heard that, right? A virtue to practice, fruit of the spirit, a spontaneous emotion or an expression that responds to something that suddenly makes sense to us, an epiphany. Contentment with your life and wise living, rooted in faith, hope, and love. Not a primary principle, but a derivative of these. And so, joy has this multifaceted meaning to it. But then there's this other thing that we experience called happiness. And how do happiness and joy diff are, are different from each other? Happiness, in, in my view, happiness is something that comes... In. It's external. It comes in. It's something that I consume. It's cons consumption and satisfaction, thirst and quench when I, when I get what I want, when my desires are fulfilled. If I'm happy about something, it's because 
some things all of a sudden lined up exactly the way I imagined it and exactly the way I wanted it, and all of a sudden I'm, I'm like, I'm happy because it, it, it came to me the way I wanted to. Now let me ask you this question, though. Can you get what you want? All those circumstances are right. All those circumstances are perfect. Conditions are perfect, right? Can you, can you get what you want and still not have joy? Yeah, absolutely. I think that's... In fact, I think what happens so much of our life is consumed with pursuing happiness that we never actually really experience joy, deep-seated joy, joy for life. In my view, joy is what is internal flowing out. Joy is something that has changed on the inside in me. Gratitude, what we talked about last week, encouragement, motivation, passionate contentment. I am content, I'm happy with the, with, with the way things are, but there's this burning. Joy is a fire, isn't it? Joy is a fire that burns, and it's a passion that burns inside of me. And even though I'm content, but there's still this passion and longing that's constantly being fulfilled. Joy manifests in me when through my present circumstances, something propels my experience into a reality beyond what I have already known. I'm going to say it one more time. Joy manifests in me when through my present circumstances, something propels my experience into a reality beyond what I have already known. That's why when the shepherds heard the angels saying, we come to bring you good tidings of what? Great joy. When they heard this, that there's this reality outside of themselves, there's a Savior going to be born in Bethlehem, Christ the Lord, that this, your sins are going to be forgiven, you're going to be with God, Emmanuel is coming to dwell with us, that there is this reality of heaven that's about to change the way that you think and the way that you are. And so there's these good tidings of great joy that will be for all people, and these guys their lives are changed. Their perspectives are changed. The reality that, that is outside of themselves, they begin to experience it for the first time, and it transforms their life. And what do they do? They start rejoicing, right? They take the truth of God into their heart, and it, tra it transforms everything for them. When I believe the truth of God's word towards me, it creates in me his joy. When I believe the truth of God's word towards me, it creates in me his joy. Okay? Now, we talked about encouragement last week, right? And one of the things about encouragement is be able, being able to speak these words. And so what follows encouragement is joy. I don't know anybody that has been encouraged that's depressed afterwards. When you get encouraged, you get joyful. There's something that wells up in you. Why? Because something changed because you heard what was true, you believed it, and it transformed you. You can't stay depressed and be encouraged. You can't have joy and depression in the same breath. You see, this is how it's possible for Jesus to have the joy set before him to endure what? The cross. When all hell is breaking loose in my life, how can I endure? How can I make it through? The joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. And what was that joy? It was the truth, what he knew to be true, that when he died and offered his life on the cross, that he would be bringing home something so precious to him, someone so precious to him, his bride. The joy that was set before him, the joy of knowing that he was going to be with the Father, the joy of knowing that his children were coming home, the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. The truth that he believed and he knew fortified him, it augmented his nature. The Holy Spirit working. It's a fruit, isn't it? It's fruit of the Holy Spirit. So that when the Holy Spirit Moves and manifests that joy follows. It's love, what? And then joy, right? I love that, how he, how he pointed that out. Love and then joy. Peace, patience, kindness, and all of those things flow. And when we see the fruit of, of the Holy Spirit, we've got to recognize a few things. That the Holy Spirit, and let me ask you this question. Can someone experience, now you're going to, this is a little bit of a trick question, okay? But can some, don't answer. Can someone experience joy Real joy and not be a believer in Jesus Christ. 
The answer is yes. And let me tell you why. Okay? Let me tell you why. Because the Holy Spirit is speaking to every man. You hear what I'm saying? The Holy Spirit speaks and he moves throughout this world. When you, when a non-believer, someone who does not believe in Jesus, when they look up at the stars, what are they looking at? And they are overwhelmed with a sense of awe and wonder at the great vast expanse of the universe. And they're humbled. What are they experiencing? When someone goes to a waterfall, a beautiful waterfall, and they're stunned, the sun sets and they're stunned, they play, their children are playing, and they're enjoying the, 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 the beauty of what God made, what God created, then we know that the Holy Spirit and the fruit of his actions in this world is love, joy, peace, patience. Yes, my friends, we can experience those things because the Holy Spirit is moving. Now here's what is so often the problem, is that you... When you're reaching out to your friends and you're saying, and, and you want to tell them about Jesus, you don't beat them upside the head and say, you need to know, you don't know Jesus, you don't know the truth, and we start beating them over the head with things that, and you're not 